In this segment, we're going to cover doing a clip assignment as well as how to do uh, animated transitions. So using those clip assignments within animated wipes. All right, let's begin. So from my home menu, I go into my clips. And inside of my clips, I'm able to assign these clips. So there are placeholders or ID numbers. Um, so my different clip assignment. So the first one, I'm going to assign the channel device is playback to. And we're going to refresh and choose a clip ID, which we'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the ice vision. And we're going to go ahead and cue that clip. So now I've assigned to ID 0, playback 2, and by default it does not loop. We can also assign clips for video playback. That way make it very easy for packages or clips that I want to play throughout my production to be able to call them up from the switcher, from a clip list, and play them back. So same thing, clip 1, I'm going to say is playback 1. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick this loop and I'm going to go ahead and queue it up. You can also set in and out points. So here, because they didn't queue it in the first frame of black, I went ahead and I moved it forward. So on the 15th frame is the first actual video frame. So I set my in point and then I set my out point at the end. I also set that by default this clip loops. This will be my looping background if I want to use it to loop over and over and over again. Okay, so we've set up some clips and we'll go ahead and we'll try to set up another one. Playback one, we're going to choose the ID and bars and tone. So we have a couple of different clips assigned. So the way it works is for things like my clips that I want to roll back during a production, when I select the video server channel, I now get those clips which I've assigned. I can queue up a clip. It will queue into preview. I can see that it's currently queued to 15 frames in my preview overlay. And because roll clip is enabled, anytime I press the cut, auto trans, or move the fader handle, it will send the play command and take it to air. So we'll go ahead and just cut it on air. And we see that it automatically starts playing. What's also nice is in my preview overlay, I'll see the clip that's on air, I'll see its countdown timer, right, making it very easy for me to transition out at the appropriate time. So that's how we use the clips when we're trying to run packages and elements throughout my, my production. The other method that we use is of course custom controls. I could use custom controls and treat it like a shop box so I can easily have a single button that will queue up that clip ID and take it to air, similar to what we showed during the custom control programming. However, I may want to build it for transitions or effects. The video server has video and alpha channels. So we're using playback 2 or PB2 in this case to do animated wipe transitions. So this will allow me to transition from say one camera to another with an animated wipe. So to do that, let's start recording a custom control. So I'm going to take this custom control and we are going to start recording. So now I want to make sure that I enter the important elements. So I want to make sure that in key 4 it has playback 2 assigned to it. So that way it always makes sure if it changed it would reapply those settings. right? I want to make sure to cut it on air. So first we're going to queue an event. So we say, okay, custom controls, insert special, VTR, playback two, and we want to go to clip, and here's our ice vision transition. So insert that. So it made sure to queue up that clip for me. Now I want to pause for a small duration, and we'll say about 10 frames, just to make sure that it queued up. Then we're going to cut the key on air. And it plays and rolls. So then we're going to insert a pause of, and this is only because I know the duration, it's 15 frames to the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that. Then we'd perform 
the cut on the switcher, and it could be a different transition if the animation does not fill the whole screen, like a wipe or a dissolve or whatever you'd like. In this case, it does fill the full screen, so I'm going to do an undercut below it. We've performed that cut. Now we need to insert a duration of the back end, which is 15 frames, plus a frame to make sure that it's clear. So we'll just throw it to 20 because it really doesn't matter that we go longer. We've inserted that. So now we've waited to the end of the transition so that we can remove the key from air so we don't leave a key on air and accidentally have a mishap. So I go to cut keys, just like before, Emily 2, and key 4 off, and we insert it. So now that we've saved that custom control, we can modify the name, and let's call it viz space wipe. So now I've got my viz wipe. And I could change the font if I wanted to, and I could even change the mnemonic color so it stands out. So we built this intentionally not touching any of the transition area or the transition controls because we wanted to be able to say, hey, I want to transition with my graphic, or I want to be able to transition just the background. So now when we run this animated transition, the wipe happens and it reveals the other source below it. So now we have this nice, easy way. I could even go to my playback one, I could queue up my clip, and I could transition element out, and there it is already playing, ready camera one, and let's go ahead and wipe back from it. So it's very easy to use the switcher to control the video server for playback functions, as well as doing your animated wipes and transitions.